Hello, this is One Man Left, and today I'm going to do a bit of an overdue video for two reasons on the Castwin Channeling Archmage Penance Brand setup. The two reasons for this video are mainly to cover the change to Penance Brand that happened several days ago now. It happened middle of last week, so it's actually been this way for about five days now. If you've been following Penance Brand, I'm sure you know that it changes how energy works and how Runebinder works, but we'll get to that. The second reason I'm doing this video is because there are some things that I don't think were clear enough in the first video, or maybe they were clear enough, but people didn't watch to the end. So I'll, I'll, I'll go over it one more time. But just to go over some of the mechanical things and some of the maybe more uh, minute details that people keep asking me questions on. So hopefully this covers things that maybe had confusion hanging from the first video and goes into some of the finer details. But let's start with Runebinder. So about a week ago, no, like Wednesday, like like five days ago, I think, um, they had a patch, and there was a change to Penance Brand that was very vague. It basically said something like, made a change to how Penance Brand tracks energy or something, which might confuse you, because that is, like, deliberately vague. But I'll give you the, the, I'll fill you in here. Penance Brand was not really working the way the gem says it does. Because what the gem says is basically that it goes to a target, and that target gains energy up to 20. In fact, the up to 20 I don't think actually was on the gem tag until this patch. It didn't specify a stat cap, but there has been a stat cap of 20. But now that is specified on the gem as well. But the way Penance Brand of Dissipation actually worked was the energy was tied to the brand itself. Which made two things happen. So if, if I made a brand over here, and there's my brand... What it means is if this brand attached to Rog over here and killed him after three pulses, that means the three energy would be stored on the brand. So then if it jumps to Nico, it would start on Nico with three energy, and that would go four, five, six, and then maybe it would jump over to Danig over here, and then it'd start, you know, seven, eight, nine. So the, the energy would be tied to the brand, and it would stay on the brand. The reason that was a strange interaction was because um, it made Runebinder not work. This is a little complicated and confusing, so I'll try to summarize it. But basically, the way the gem says it works is the energy should be stored on the target. Meaning if the target has 20 energy, and there are two brands on the target... You should have two individual ticking brands dealing the damage of 20 stacks, which effectively gives you 40 stacks of damage. But that is not what happened because the 20 energy cap was still per monster, but the energy was tied to the brand. So that might sound confusing. What that means is if I put two brands on ROG with Runebinder, that means the first brand would start gaining energy. And let's say ROG's immortal. He's a thick dude. The second brand is going to go on him and also start gaining energy. So let's say the first brand gained up to four energy by the time the second brand attached. Then they tick again. Now it's five and one, then six and two. And it would do that until it got to the point where it was at 12 and eight. And at that point, they would no longer gain energy because the target is at 20, but the individual brands are at 12 and eight. So it would sit there and tick damage. As if you had a 12 energy brand, then an 8 energy brand, doing 20 total stacks of damage. Now, the only thing that Runebinder actually offered was the fact that it made them get to 20 stacks faster. But if you have a lot of cast speed, if you're stacking cast speed like everywhere, which you should be if you're playing Penance Brand, it it basically made Runebinder terrible. <laughs> it's in a terrible spot on the tree, as you can see, is this abomination of a path. I think Rudy said his path as a Pathfinder getting Runebinder is just, like, ab even more wonky than this. But it's in a terrible spot, and it did very little overall. So it actually wasn't worth taking Runebinder before, because you'd still get 20 energy with one brand. So the way the build played before is you had seven brands, but only one max per brand with no Runebinder. But now, after the change, Runebinder essentially doubles your single target damage. So that's a buff. But there's weird scenarios like Delve, for example, where it's actually a bit of a nerf, because before in Delve, you would have had, say, all these brands out that a new monster spawns, and you just have all these 20 energy brands at, like, full radius, full energy, 
And anytime a new monster would spawn, some 20 energy brand would just attach to them and annihilate them. Whereas now, it actually, in, in a lot of cases I've observed, has lower AoE. Because um, now a new, like, if a brand kills something and then reattaches to a, a newly spawned monster, it starts back at one energy again. So there are actual, like, AoE scenarios, particularly Delve, where it can actually be a bit of a nerf. But if you are playing Penance Brand right now on pretty much any build, and you go do a boss now with Rune Binder, it will die twice as fast. It will actually maybe even die slightly faster than twice as fast, because it will ramp faster. So, with that change, before I was not taking Rune Binder, but now I am. And, like I said, because this is in such a weird spot, if you look at the tree before... If I pull this up with, uh, let's go to a Victor snap, or not a Victor, let's go to a Dennis snapshot here. With, with a no rune binder tree here, the closest way to get to rune binder was four points. You had to go one, two, three, four. It was terrible. You just had to give up four points for a keystone in your area that you're completely surrounding because it's just on this weird isolated island has no good path to it. So because it's pretty much going to cost four points to get there no matter what, this actually weirdly becomes an efficient path. You don't have to go this way. You can also connect up here. They're pretty equivalent. Or you could maybe ditch this area and connect right here. You lose some split personality stacks, but you gain some points. They're all fairly equivalent. Um, but this is the one I've taken that's a little more efficient. But um, I'll go over some of the tree stuff in a little bit. Because that's the last thing I want to go over is the fact that I've run a few different cluster jewel setups... I've ran three larges with Impossible Escape. I've ran two. I've looked at a three setup. You could do. I'll even maybe briefly go over an Adorn setup or like the Giga setup with pure like pure voices and pure smalls. But I'll, I'll go over that last. So the second thing I'm gonna go over here is the far and away most asked question, and it's mana spend. So the way the whole build works is you have to spend a very specific amount of mana. This is not, like, a good build for a new player. This is one of the most, like, restrictive builds you can possibly play because of the, the rules around it. So let me, let me just, like, make a sketch here. And let's just say... Let's just make a graph here, all right? So this is a bar. Oh, that's, that's the worst line I've ever drawn in my life. All right, let's make a bar here. And this is 100%. We're choosing blue. I don't know why. It was default. All right, 100%. So, I tell people for the spend, they want to be between 94 and 99. That's where you want to be. 94. It's an okay 9, but that was way better. And 99. Alright. This is the sweet spot. This is the juice. Alright? The reason this is such a restrictive build, and the reason people have tried this build out and completely ignored... My uh, last set of instructions is if you're here, you die. <laughs> if your spend is at 92%, you die. Fun build, right? I've had people try this. They try to do the build the way I'm doing it. I just got a fub gun raid, so there's now going to be 700 people in here wondering what the hell I'm talking about, about mana stuff. But we're going to finish this, all right? Uh... Hey, I raided him last time, and he had a mirror drop 28 seconds later. So, may well, no, I can't have a mirror drop, because I'm talking on a print screen here. Okay, anyways. So, the other thing that happens if you're over 100% is you do zero damage. So, that's terrible. You either do, you die, or you do zero DPS. If you're in between 94 and 99... This is one of the most broken builds in the entire game. If you're below 94, your character dies. And if you're above 100, your character does zero damage. Fun, right? So you really want to have a lot of effort put into getting into this range to get the build to work. So how do you do that? Well, let's look at mine. When I tell people this number, they maybe don't know what I'm talking about. I talked about this at the end of the last video, but it was 33 minutes in, so maybe people didn't watch it. If you're going to play the build, please watch the next three minutes, all right? I'm going to use Arcane Cloak, and we're going to look at the cost of my Penance brand. All right, what is it? 44589 So, you have to pull out your Abacus here, and 
my so 44 589 my mana plus energy shield combined is 17 849 plus 29 604 which is 47 453 the ratio there i don't know it's something like that is 94 percent. so i'm just at the bottom i actually could be a little higher um, but I'm, I'm just barely enough that I'm not double casting, which is what happens if you're right here. Your character dies because your spend is too low. So what happens is the reason cast when channeling does not trigger is because you don't have the mana. Because if, if the cost of the brand is almost my entire combined pool, after I cloak, I don't have the mana. But as it regenerates, if my cost is too low, let's say the cutoff to cast the brand is here. If my mana gets here before the four seconds is up, it will spend all of it. All of my mana and all of my energy shield goes away. Your character will die. It doesn't actually kill you. It will leave you at one HP and you'll regenerate back. But if you're surrounded by monsters, you will die. So... You want to get the spend up higher than 94 to prevent that from happening. Because if it's higher than 94 combined, you're in a pretty good spot where you aren't physically able to cast the brand. So the way you do that is a couple things. The first and foremost is change your Inagon percentage. Most people that have a problem with this are going to be too low. Because if you're too high, the solution is easy. You lower your cloak level. That's it. If you're at, if you're at 101... And your cloak level is 21. You got the easiest solution on earth. You know what you do? You lower your cloak level to 20. That's it. You're done. Peace. Okay? If it's still at 100 at 20, you lower it to 19. It's that easy. You don't have much problems in this world if you're, if you're, if you're too high. Because you just drop your cloak level. Your cloak level doesn't even actually contribute that much to your damage. It's almost insignificant. Because all your flat damage is coming from Archmage. Not from the cloak. The cloak is like 6% of it. It's mostly Archmage damage. So you don't really care about the cloak level. You just care about the fact that it spends the exact amount of mana. So you're on better terms being too high. So try to get an Indigon percentage. Probably that's closer to 60. Unless you really, really know what you're doing. And you have probably insane gear, in which case there's some scenarios you could get away with as low as like a 52 or a 50 even. But those would be some like pretty stacked trees. For the most part, you're probably going to want on the higher side, but you don't necessarily need 60. To get this real fine tuning, some someone might need like, this might be like a 57. And you like that might be your sweet spot. But like here's 56. And like here's 58. So, like, all three of these work, but, like, 57's in the middle. But, okay. So, that's the easiest way is the combination of your Arcane Cloak level and your Indigon percentage. If you're if you're too low, some people mess with me, they're at, like, 91%. They're like, how do I get higher? Put Empower in your Cloak. Just, just slap on, like, a level 4 Empower. They're only, like, 4 Divines. And put a level put a level 4 Empower or something in your Arcane Cloak and, and get the level up 3 levels higher. And that will add like 4 or 5% to your spend ratio. If you're at 90 and you throw in a level 4 in power, that'll get you to 94 or 95 usually. Um, but the other thing is a little counterintuitive and it's actually to get more mana. There is a bit of a gear requirement and you need to have probably at least 12k mana probably to be safer 13 or 14k. But the reason that more mana actually helps you is because the amount of spend you have from Archmage is a percentage of your mana. So it's always 5%. If you have 10 mana or if you have a million mana, it's always 5%. It's always the same base percentage, and your gem multipliers are always the same. But your Indigon stacks go up. If you double your amount of mana, the percentage stays the same, but your Indigon stacks double. So your spend ratio goes up. If you're at 90% and you have 12k mana, and you increase your mana to 13k, you'll be at like 97 or 8%. So if you just cannot get it above 94, you just need more mana. Um, that's kind of the gear check for the build. If you can get to that point where you can get to that 94% number, you can play the build. If you can't, you need a little bit more mana for it to work. Um, that is really the tricks for the mana spend. I recommend just tweaking it in Path of Building. Like, if I look at my cloak, it's 12,000 exactly. Like, so I can go in Path of Building here. 
And I can, uh, you know, oh, we have Quinn here. Whoops. Don't, don't ask. Don't ask. He was doing Maven today, and I was excited. I'm like, what's his damage? It looks impeccable. Um... But, you know, if, if you if you look at your, your pen and spread and, you know, you check the boxes, whatever, yada, yada, make it boss. Okay. So, you look at, you look at pen and spread. If I put my spend to 12,000, um, that's not right, is it? Something's off here. Oh, I know it's off. I don't have my uh, discipline on. There we go. So, if I put my spend to 12,000 here. Um, some, hang on, just a second. Something's not off. Something's not right here. Grace is on. No? Well, something's slightly off. Anyways, so, you can basically tweak it here, right? So, you can go to... The, my number's currently off, though, so it's going to bother me, because uh, that is not correct. It, it should be 12,000, and it should be... Yeah, this is not right. Why is that, though? Huh? Okay, well, right now, Path of Building's wrong. Um, but usually, Path of Building's right, and you can trust that number. We try it one more time just to see what got imported wrong. But POB is currently wrong. It also says, oh, it's because my large is an okay, yeah. Pat, this this is why POE Ninja is always wrong. Path of Building does not import cluster jewels. So yeah, uh, now let's look at it. So yeah, you have to manually turn on your cluster jewels because Path of Building and like POE Ninja don't don't turn on clusters. You have to do it manually. So now it's correct. Forty five four four nine. Boom, 45, oh, it's because I'm not on full mana, hang on. Wait, right, I'm close enough, all right, you get the idea. You can tweak it to match your cloak level, so you can just do the napkin math, like mine's 67%, so I can just take like 67% of 17,849, and like boom, it's 12,000. Um, but enter the exact number to be safe, because it will round up, it's one of the few things in the game that does round up. It's 11,958, but it's not going to give me that final stack because it's the display on the tooltip rounds up, but it, it actually doesn't for the Indigon stacks. But you can tweak that number. Actually, that's why this is wrong, then. That's actually a good example because it's 11,8. Yep, there it is. 44589. Now we're right. Yep. 44589. There it is. Okay. So, yeah. Um, check it in POB. Basically, just you can tweak this number by increments of 200 until you get this number to the percentage you like. And then you can basically back calculate this percentage of your mana and then figure out what cloak level that is if you're trying to like tweak the, the level to be the right amount. Um, but yeah, that, that that is the whole build. Like if you get that wrong, there's no point playing this build. If you didn't watch the last five minutes, it's not that I, I'm gonna tell you to not play the build, it's that you aren't actually playing the build. You're not. If you didn't watch this five minutes, you're not doing this. No matter how much you try, no matter how much you look at Peely Ninja, you're literally not playing the build. Because you're either dying or doing zero damage. You're only playing the build if you're in between these two numbers. Alright. Next thing I'm going to go over briefly, I'm going to go over the staff craft one more time. Because that was the portion of the video where my, my stream cut out. So, I'm going to just speed run this just to make sure... You know what to do. Awaken orb. Cast when channeling. No, okay, we'll start with the single target staff. Awaken orb. 20% more spell damage on Shaper. And then normally power charge on critical on Elder. But on this staff in particular, this was a pure Shaper staff that has 13 lightning pen. But normally I would recommend for your crafting to take power charge on critical instead of lightning pen and use the Elder. Peacock, and the Shaper, 20% more, smush them together, and then you're going to hit either a blank prefix or a random third prefix. Hopefully it hits mana. This is going to take a lot of alt spamming, probably some Awaken Orb attempts. It usually takes people between 5 and 10 to get something acceptable. But if you miss and hit, like, 
78% physical damage. You kind of just got to go for the annul. If you do have an open prefix, I recommend crafting cast... You cannot roll caster mods for one divine. Because this blocks like 38% of all staff prefixes. But mana is not a caster mod. However, the 20% more spell damage mod is... Or maybe I have that backwards. Uh, yes, the 20% more spell damage mod is... So that means even if you slam and you brick the slam, whatever you slammed is guaranteed not a caster mod because of the craft. And the 20% more mod is a caster mod. So if you go for the annul orb, you now have a 50-50 instead of a 1 and 3. And you pretty much just do that until you brick one of the two original mods, just trying to get that third prefix. You could go for a triple damage prefix and have a usable weapon with a lot of damage. But just because it's so hard to get the spend numbers high and make everything work, it usually will go easier on your life if you have mana. It doesn't need to be tier 1. This is like tier 5. Tier 5, okay? Probably even like tier 7 or 6 or higher is like kind of acceptable. There's 12 tiers. They're all equally weighted, I think. No, no, the top 2 or 3 are like half and half. Uh, but for the most part, they're pretty equally weighted up until like Zafri and Blue. Um... But then for the Caster and Channeling Staff, unfortunately for this one, you cannot fuse Power Charger and Critical with Caster and Channeling because they're both part of the uh, Influence Gem mod pool. They can't double up. So you could go Pure Shaper like this one. This is the Mirror Staff, but um, the easier way to do it is to take the Caster and Channeling Shaper mod on one staff. And by the way, these have to be base staffs. They can't be War Staff, so be sure to craft on that, on a, on a base staff, not a War Staff. And then you have to take... The other mod I recommend is Elder 10% spell damage per int. Because you get a lot of ints. So that would be 200% increased spell damage. Which with Indigon stacks is not as much as the 20% more mod. But without Indigon stacks is much more than the 20% more mod. So I would say they're pretty much equivalent. It's like kind of nicer quality of life having the int stack mod. But it's just like bigger sheet damage and bigger end game setup for having the 20% more mod. But I would take Caswin Channeling on Shaper and 1% spell damage per 10 int on Elder. Smush them together, same way. Try to get a good third prefix, ideally mana, but like a damage prefix could also work if you have enough mana otherwise. So you're going to have st either a ca uh, either an AoE staff or a single target staff for like a swap setup that have three prefixes now. You're in the, ho you're in the home stretch now, you're home free. Because all you do now is lock prefixes, Isling... Try to hit double damage, but cast speed's also acceptable. Or crit multi if you have crit jewels when you're near a rare unique enemy. But ideally you hit double damage or cast speed, and then craft the other. If you hit cast speed, craft double damage. If you hit double damage, craft cast speed. You want those two mods. And then just do a third slam, and hopefully the third mod's good. If you're not satisfied, you can you can clean suffixes again and try Isling again. But the suffixes are pretty easy. You're, you're honestly looking at between like one and three tries usually. Uh, they're not as picky, necessarily. It's just cast speed, double damage. You get that, you're golden. Um, last thing I'm going to talk about is the tree setups. So I'm doing this weird wonky path with Runebinder now. They've changed how Penance Brand works. But I've gone back to two larges. But you'll maybe notice in my previous setup, um, I actually had a three large setup at one point with um, Impossible Escape. And... Uh, the honest truth is, like, all these setups are super equivalent. Like, so I had the Impossible Escape setup on Necro Aegis with um, a 12170. There's, a, there's like, at least three good combos in here. There's, like, 14920. There's some 15k number I don't have off the top of my head. Um, but that's a pretty good setup. And it, the benefit of that setup is you get a few more cluster jewel, or you get a few more jewel sockets. So if you really need the jewel sockets, this setup gets you the most open jewel sockets. But I've actually switched to um, dropping this cluster and just going for the two large setup. And the honest truth is they're very similar stats. Um, I think this setup is a little bit superior, like super, super end game when you get like the small cluster jewel. Uh, I have a mirror small here. But the more of these you get, I think the more you're going to... And, like, if you go voices, the more you're going to favor um, the too large setup, most likely. Um, but they're in most gear scenarios, they're very equivalent. This is one of the most, like, equal setups I've ever had. It was actually kind of frustrating theorycrafting the build because I was looking for a clear winner. And everything I tried was, like, tied. 
So there's like five setups that are all tied. And it, honestly, the tiebreaker could just be whatever lethal pride you have. There's like three combos up top, three combos down bottom. If you have a better lethal pride one way or another, it's probably better to just do that setup. Just because they're so close. But um, I would play with it in POB, use the timeless jewel calc, maybe see what you can get. But they're very, very tied. But this is the setup I'm going with right now for two larges. I think the impossible escape setup is still fine. But um, the only other setups I think that are really viable. You could do like a Voices of Dorne setup. I've POB'd it. It's like not better than the small cluster setup. But it's maybe slightly better than this. You can do the 12 passive large with like either cast speed, all attributes, or int for two out of three suffixes. And then like mana, 35 effect prefix, and do that. That's pretty equivalent. Maybe even slightly better what I'm doing, but probably not better in voices. Um, there's like the super endgame planet eater setup, which is this bullshit. Which has like 36k energy shield with six mirrored smalls and two one passive voices. This is basically what Nier's rocking, and this is probably what I'm going to do within a few weeks here. This is like the 15 mirror setup. This is... If you if you get this far, you're not asking me for questions. You're you're the guy she told me to not worry about if you get this far. So don't even ask me what, what to do if you get this far. You, you already know. But, um, yeah. TLDR, see what kind of lethal pride you can get. They're very, very equivalent, but I would try to POB it just because... There's not really a clear-cut winner. They're all very close. But I'm playing around with this setup right now to have a good rune binder path. But play with it in POB. Check Lethal Prides. Hopefully figure out a little bit on staff crafting, rune binder mechanics, and mana spend. 